New orky rules for DACA weapons today, because if at first you don't succeed, then throw more lead at it. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we've got another fun new mechanic for the Orcs, with the addition of a new weapon class known very appropriately as DACA weapons. Both shooters and big shooters will be amped up a fair bit, and this could be quite interesting for quite a lot of other guns as well. We've also got some crazy buffs to rocket launchers and the bubble chocker, and I'll just touch on some of those beast snagger previews that we got on Monday. So previously, Games Workshop mentioned that Orc Boys are going to Toughness 5, and Choppers are getting an extra AP-1, and it did make me wonder whether Shooters will be getting some sort of a buff as well to balance that out. It seems that is indeed the case, as Shooters become DACA weapons, and DACA weapons are basically sort of a weird amalgamation between Assault and Rapid Fire, where they both get to advance and shoot as if they were Assault weapons, and while they don't get double the shots, they do get extra shots up close. Basically, DACA weapons have two values for the numbers of attacks they make. You get to use the first bigger number if they're within half range of their target, or if they're over half their weapon's range away, then you use the second smaller number instead. You can see this on this new shooter's profile. It's still 18 inch range, strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1, but it has the DACA 3 slash 2 rule, so it means that you'll be getting 3 shots with your shooter when you're within 9 inch range of the foam. It feels pretty appropriate, to be honest. Rather than getting extra increases in firepower, the orcs are just getting tons more shots, and what could be more orky than throwing buckets and buckets of dice at the enemy and hoping for something to stick? In addition, we already saw yesterday that the speed war special rule gives you some extra shots on vehicles with DACA weapons, so every DACA weapon on a vehicle or bike will get plus one shot on the turn that you call it. I'm going to be pretty interested to see what sort of profile the bike-mounted DACA guns have, if they're similar to a short-range big shooter, they could get some pretty ludicrous shooting on the go. Theoretically, that'll be 6 strength 5 shots at AP-1 in the turn that you call the speed war. Just sticking with the standard shooters though, getting 3 shots out of them at 9 inches potentially really is quite interesting. You could get 90 shots from a 30 strong mob, though with 9 inch being the DACA shot range, it is maybe a little bit unhelpful for getting those max shots automatically, as it won't work with things like Dajump or Teleporter. I do kind of wonder whether this special rule might mean that we're losing the Daka 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 special rule on all Orc units, the one where any sixes to hit generate an extra shot. Generally, Games Workshop have been trying to strip away built-in re-rolls to things, so it's not impossible that these extra shots might be a compensation for losing that rule. I would bear in mind as well that Orc boys might well cost a little bit more as well. They are going to Toughness 5, and with extra firepower on the go as well, you'd certainly be getting a massive amount more value out of the boys' squads. They're currently 8 points at the moment, I wouldn't be massively surprised to see 9 or 10. If they remain 8 though, then this is absolutely great. Otherwise, we have a few more powerful DACA weapons previews. Big shooters might just be a little bit less underwhelming now. 5 shots at 18 inches does mean that you're likely to get at least 1 or 2 hits on the enemy. Though still AP 0 and damage 1 means they're not going to be great for anything other than light infantry. Mork's Roar, Gaskor's Gun gains an extra 6 inch of range, that's up to 36 inches now and that gains an additional 4 shots if it's in DACA range, so up to 16 shots at strength 5, AP-1. Finally, the Deathstorm Mega Shooter on the Gorkonaut, that one's currently strength 6, AP-1 and damage 1, that's going up from 18 shots, all the way up to being a 30 or 20 weapon with the DACA rule. I'm sure there will be plenty of ways to buff its shooting, but even if the DACA 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 rule happens to be gone, that's still going to be a big 10 hits on the enemy when this thing's up close. To be honest, this DACA rule is nice and everything, but I'd say the really big boost of the preview comes to rockets and custom mega blasters. Both rockets and custom mega blasters have both picked up D3 shots and the blast keyword. It's not all good news as they have picked up the heavy weapon keyword, but still the increase in firepower is just absolutely insane. Even if you are moving and hitting on sixes, it will still average the same amount of hits on the enemy, but if you happen to have a turn standing still or the weapons mounted on a vehicle, you're essentially flat doubling the firepower. Not only that, but it gets even better against anything that's got 6 or more models in the unit. Blast will give you an automatic 3 shots against them, so they seem pretty much ideal weapons to target fairly big units of elites, things like tough space marine terminators perhaps. The custom mega blaster is basically just the same, that one does retain assault, it doesn't have to be heavy, and it's now d3 shots rather than 1, keeping it strength 8, AP-3 and damage d6. 
I might not be too surprised if both of these go up in points a bit, particularly on vehicles for the rockets. I guess they have just doubled the firepower of the weapon, and potentially more against big units. I sort of feel like there's a bit of a power disparity between the rocket launcher and big shooter now. Big shooters still seem a very cheap and slightly underwhelming upgrade, where rockets seem incredibly powerful in the right circumstances. Finally, the rocket cannon on the Megatrack Scrapjet has also gained shots too, that's now up to 3d3 shots from 2d3, so an average of 6 damage 3 rocket shots coming out of that one. I think these changes will feel quite good in game, and feel a bit more representative of what the models actually look like they'd be able to achieve, though I think that the rules are maybe a little bit odd from a fluff point of view. Now we basically have cobbled together orc rockets being twice as efficient as imperial manufactured ones. If only space marines could manufacture some man portable rockets this good, I'm sure they'd be all over them. Next up we come to the bubble chucker, really quite a fun idea for a support weapon that's just been a little bit underwhelming. Every time you fired you'd have to roll 4d6, d6 shots, d6 strength, AP and damage. Theoretically it could be really powerful if the stars aligned, but in reality they'd often get let down by only having one shot or only having a strength of one or something. Now you get three profiles, all of which are guaranteed to at least be some use against something. You have to select targets first, and then for each bubble chocker gun in the unit, you roll a d3, and you see which random bubble shot it gets. The first one's a big bubble, 3d3 shots, strength 6, AP-2 and damage 1, so quite a good one against hordes. The next one is called a wobbly bubble, heavy d6, strength 8, AP-3 and damage 3. That one seems really quite good to be honest, very general purpose, and going to be useful against everything. Then we have a dense bubble, basically a single anti-tank shot, at a strength 10, AP minus 4, and damage D3 plus 3. While that big damage number is quite nice, it's a bit of a shame that it's basically inferior against all targets compared with the wobbly bubble, even if you're targeting heavy armour. I think basically when you're firing this thing, you're going to hope for the second result as much as possible. At least these things are guaranteed to do something at least somewhat useful now. How efficient they are depends on how much they'll cost of course, but they seem like they could be at least somewhat efficient against medium vehicles or heavy infantry. Finally, back from Monday's preview, we've got a couple of rules from the Beast Snaggers. First up, the Beast Snagger Boys upgrades have been revealed. Instead of a power claw, the knobs can take a power snapper, so that's put them at strength 7, AP minus 2 and damage 2, but you don't get the minus 1 to hit that power claws give you. Despite being similar to a power claw model wise, it's almost the exact same as a big chopper but one extra AP, and if it winds up being a 5 point upgrade like the chopper, it seems like this could be a really easy include in the squad, a bit of extra cheap damage on the strongest model in the unit. We also have a thump gun, basically their grenade launcher type thing, 18 inch assault d3 shots, strength 6 AP minus 1 and damage d3, and it has the blast keyword. I'm a little bit less sold on these ones to be honest, they do look quite cool, but I'm not sure I'd really bother taking them unless they're something like 1 or 2 points. If they are a 5 point upgrade like I suspect they'll be, I'm not sure you're really gaining all that much compared with just taking your standard slugger and chopper, and having the beast snagger boy be a bit more efficient in melee. With all ballistic skill, strength 6 and AP-1 just really isn't going to achieve all that much. Finally we have the profile for the squig hog boys, 10 inch movement, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 5+, plus, strength 5, Toughness 6, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 6 and a 4 plus save. A pretty generous cavalry profile there, at least moderately hard to take out with a toughness 6, and I guess more or less what I would have expected for the unit now that boys are toughness 5. Definitely a nice generalist profile, though it's kind of hard to say anything meaningful as to how good it's going to be, it's going to entirely depend on their damage output and their points cost. I hope they've managed to balance them right, there really are some pretty cool models, and I'm sure a lot of Orc players are looking forward to adding them to the army. So let me know what you think of all the new guns then. Are you looking forward to drowning your foes in buckets of dice, both in the shooting phase and in the fight phase? I'll certainly be covering any more previews for the Orcs, and I'll review their codex as soon as it's out. So feel free to subscribe to Orspets Tactics, or check back if you'd like to see that. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel and keep these videos coming, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry to the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, 
and the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.